मैंने पोस्ट करके दे विल बी जॉइनिंग सो वीडियो रिकॉर्डिंग भी स्टार्ट कर दी है सो दैट यू विल बी एबल टू सी सो हम स्टार्ट करते हैं बिस्मिल्लाहिर्रहमानिर्रहीम सबसे पहले अपना इंट्रोडक्शन दे दूं कुछ लोग बार-बार मेरे इंट्रोडक्शन पूछते हैं आई डोंट नो व्हाई बट स्टिल माय नेम इज डॉक्टर नासिर एंड माय आई गो बाय द नेम ऑफ डॉक्टर नासिर खान माय फुल नेम इज मोहम्मद नासिर सईद खान I worked as professor of psychiatry in Services Institute of Medical Sciences. I took a premature ret- retirement and came to Canada. I am working here. I have done my FCPS in psychiatry. I was working as president Pakistan Psychiatric Society as well. Been an examiner for almost 25 years or so. Now I'm working in Canada, working as associate professor in Department of Psychiatry, Queen's University, Kingston, Canada, at the moment, uh, and I'll be presenting today on conversion disorders. I was supposed to present yesterday on medically unexplained symptoms, uh, which is related to this disorder, but unfortunately, I was not able to do that because Karachi me barish ho gayi, barish ki wajah se wahan pe sadke block ho gayi, aur jin host ne meri recording karni thi, wo nahi kar paaye. So sorry for that. But as soon as uh, I believe, probably now it is planned to be done on uh, Wednesday around the same time, this time. uh I, and maybe i'll be able to share that recording or share the link with you kindly mute your mics all of you and also try try to discontinue your videos thank you no videos and mic should be muted then you will be able to see me properly coming back again um so i'll be talking about this conversion disorder today and i will try to cover up this topic as much in as much detail as possible i may not be able to cover everything today because it's a lengthy subject most of the studies quoted here are from western uh, literature but some of them are quoted in the local literature literature as well लोकल लिटरेचर में आपको रिलेटिवली पब्लिश डेटा में कम चीजें मिलती हैं बट जस्ट कीप अ एन आई ऑन इट और जहां से भी कोई लोकल लिटरेचर मिले इसको जरूर पढ़ें नाउ दिस कन्वर्जन सिम्टम्स दे स्टार्टेड विद द फिनमिना द केस ऑफ एन आ ओ विच वॉज द फेमस केस बाय फ्रॉयड एंड फ्रॉयड स्टार्टेड द बेसिस ऑफ दिस टर्म Uh, which is started from case of ana o and hysteria uh, and then it continued and it modified mo- various terminologies were given to it and those terminologies uh, were partly uh, used still sometimes yes sometimes no but most of the time we do uh, see this okay so the mirza इकबाल का शहर है या मिर्जा गालिब का ये शहर है दर्द इतना है कि हर रंग में है मैशर बर्फा और सुकून ऐसा कि मर जाने को जी चाहता है वेन पीपल आस्ट मी इन दिगिनिंग वाई यू मूव टू कैनेडा सो आई ऑलवेज टेल एम द स्टोरी दैट माई वाइफ था द वे आई वॉज रनिंग इन पाकिस्तान एज प्रोफेसर ऑफ सकाइट्री एग्जामिनर सी पी एस पी एंड प्रेजिडेंट पाकिस्तान सकाइट्रिक सोसाइटी एंड सो मेनी थिंग्स टू बी डन सो ही थॉट दैट आई विल प्रोबेबली पास ऑफ एंड शी ब्रॉड मी टू कैनेडा और जब मैं यहाँ आया तो यहाँ का जो काम का पेस है ऑल्दो कि काम बहुत है तो लोगों ने मुझे पूछा कि जी आप कैसा महसूस करते हैं तो मैंने ये शेर उनको अक्सर सुनाया दर्द इतना है कि हर रग में है मैशर बर्फा और सुकून ऐसा कि मर जाने को जी चाहता है सो वेन आई ट्राई टू सिट आउटसाइड माय होम हेयर देर इज सो मच क्वाइटनेस दैट देर इज नो नॉइस नो रिक्शा नो एनीथिंग सो आई फील के सुकून ऐसा कि मर जाने को जी चाहता है एनीवे कमिंग बैक टू द टॉपिक नाउ the somatoform disorders which is the name given in dsm 4 tr and dsm 4 includes conversion disorders hypochondriasis somatization disorder body dysmorphic disorders and pain disorders 
Unfortunately, because the name is changed in DSM-5 uh, to something else, which I will come back later, now these terms are relatively more confusing for the psychiatrists working in Pakistan. So there are number of the same terms with the same symptomatology and practically the same diagnostic criteria, but the names and the description varies. So DSM-4 explained somatoform disorders. In ICD-10, there is another name. And then DSM-5 gives an another name. And there, there is dissociative disorders, which has three, four more categories. Practically almost a similar disorder, but different description. We'll talk somewhat of, about all of them so that I can try to correct your confusion, but I'm not sure how much I will be able to do that justification. So I will rely more on you so that you'll be able to tell me, uh, ask me the question so that I can respond and clarify. So somatoform disorders, the definition, taking the form of soma with implication of non-somatic, unexplained disorder. Soma means organ. So the somatic is for somatic means in the organ. Somato form means organ, but not explained. The symptoms are not explained by the complaints related to that organ. So if a patient would say, shikayat kare ke mere pet mein dard hai, or is jaga pe middle mein dard hai. So, I assume that there probably a stomach pain and in stomach there is a DD, the most common DD is an ulceration. But if all the investigations related to this pain are negative, and then they have a severe complaint of pain, and you give antacids and other painkillers, and the pain is not good, then these are unexplained disorders. Why he is having pain of stomach which cannot be explained on the basis of actual organ problem say somatoform ka loves start hua. so somatoform means the problem associated with the organs but cannot be explained by the pathology in that organ so that is somatoform a broad group of illness with bodily sign and symptoms as the predominant focus influenced by the psyche. Now, when they are not explained on the basis of the symptoms and the organ pathology, then we assume that the pathology is somewhere else, which is mind. So the mind is the CPU, the computer, uh, the, uh, the brain is the controlling thing of all the organs in our body. Like stomach is controlled by the brain. The intestines are controlled by the brain. The respiratory system is controlled by the brain. The muscles are controlled by the brain. So something happening in the brain which leads to these symptoms in a specific organ but cannot be explained by organic pathology, then it is somatoform. I hope this is clear to you. Concept of mind and body interactions with signals from the brain indicating a problem. So there is a problem here in your central processing unit, which leads to some pains somewhere in the system or abnormality in the system, which cannot be explained by the system malfunctioning. Okay? So not yet, not based on theoretical const, uh, construct or labor laboratory findings, no significant substantiating, sub substantiating data, yet vigorous and severe complaints, not imaginary. So most of these complaints are genuine. Most of these complaints are there. Most of these complaints are uh, present. They are not just the makar or fray, uh, but they are not explained by any of the investigations. So if a client comes to me, if a patient comes to me and he says that, I am having stomach ulceration and he is taking three tablets of the stomach and a syrup and blah, 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 and nothing is helping him or her. My idea is if the investigations are negative, the medications for the stomach are not helping, then probably it is the problem with the 
central processing unit, which is the brain, which is leading to some complication here, the symptom transmission and why that specific organ, that is what is our concern and that we need to clear, right? So if we'll be able to connect the vitality and malfunctioning of the organ to the brain and the specific areas of the brain, we'll be able to correct it. If we won't be able to do that uh, link, make that link or correct that link, then we'll be in trouble and the patient won't get well. So the whole of the burden comes to psychiatrist if there is no significant organ pathology. An illness of symptoms or deficit affecting voluntary, motor or sensory functions, which is part of the conversion phenomenon. So motor system, sensory system, seizure disorders, anything could be there. Suggesting another medical condition, but just due to psychological factors because of preceding conflicts or other stressors. And when we try to take the history, the details from the patient, we understand that this pain or this problem started with a specific precipitating event or a stressful life factor and later on it worsened and worsened. But that history retrospectively going up to that point when the illness started and what triggered the illness is important in all conversion disorder patients. Symptoms or deficits are not intentionally produced, not due to substance, and not limited to pain or sexual symptomatology. So there is more than pain. There is more than that. So it's not only the pain, it's actually more than that. So it's a dysfunction, maybe associated with vomiting, diarrhea, uh, maybe associated with uh, cramps or any other thing, right? So gain is primarily psychological and not social, monetary or legal. When you say that this person is having these symptoms because of some specific stressor in life and the psychological symptoms are converted into a physical symptom, that is conversion disorder. And that conversion disorder takes place with some primary gains, but these primary gains whatever he is getting, are not social, monetary, or legal. Maybe there is some overlap in it, but usually it's not like that. So you have to be careful about that too. A disturbance of bodily function not conforming to current concepts of neurological anatomy and physiology, characterized by presence of one or more neurological symptoms, unexplained by a known neurological or medical disorder. So if he is or she is having headache, then the headache cannot be explained by any other phenomena, many other abnormality. Usually the physicians label it as migraine, which is unspecified or something like that. But there is no neurological deficit and the criteria for the migraine, if you go for it, it won't be fulfilled typically occurring in a setting of stress and producing considerable dysfunction. So the patient who is having this conversion disorder, she or he is dysfunctional. They are not able to perform the way they are. So the sleep may be disturbed, the appetite may be disturbed, the work is disturbed, everything is compromised. And then when it is compromised, I'm sorry, are the people joining in? So I'm hearing some voices. Okay. Yeah, so people are joining about it. Okay, go ahead, going ahead. So, a disturbance of bodily function not conforming to current concepts of neurological anatomy and physiology, characterized by the presence of one or more of neurological symptoms, unexplained by a known neurological or medical disorder. Typically occurring in a setting of stress and producing considerable dysfunction and requiring for diagnosis the association of psychological factors present at the initiation or exacerbation of symptoms. Now, this is very, very important. If you are able to link a stressful situation in a person's life with the onset of the symptoms, 
you are a good psychiatrist, you have done your job. And if you are not able to link it, then probably you are stuck and then patient won't get better till the time you will be able to do that. Unfortunately, this relationship is important, even explaining it to the family. So we cannot say to the family, which most of the doctors say, that this patient is having nothing. There is no disorder. There is nothing wrong with the patient. If there is nothing wrong with the patient, then why the patient is having a seizure? That is what the question is. And this is important for us as a psychiatrist. A disorder stemming from early concepts of hysteria by Freud, as I mentioned to you in the beginning, hypothesized that the symptoms of conversion reflect unconscious conflicts. Now, this is one explanation that there are unconscious conflicts which leads to certain symptoms, which leads to a conversion disorder historically. But there is more to it, not only this. Now, DSM-5, as you know, I always talk about the latest uh, diagnostic classi classification, but I will definitely let you know what ICD-10 says about it as well. So DSM-5, conversion disorders, and dissociative disorders are now termed as functional neurological disorders. Or ICD-10, it is still conversion and dissociative. Now, why this term was made functional neurological disorder? The reason why they changed it from conversion to dissociation to functional neurological disorder is that when the soma is normal, and the symptoms are of the soma related when an organ is normal evaluation of medical and other history and investigation and the symptoms are related to it this means there is a connection to the brain the cpu and because the that connection does not give us an indication of some pathology in the brain which is not evident on the MRI or the EEG or other brain testing, then this is not a pathology of the structure. It is the pathology of functioning of the brain. So that's the reason why they used functional neurological disorder. The functioning of the nervous system is not okay. So the person is having a conversion disorder, but unfortunately, these functional disorders labeled in the past uh, were almost the similar. So, hum ghoom ke probably maazi mein phir chale gai jab hysteria ko functional disorders bola jata tha. Sivai is ke ke ab unhone usko naam badal ke functional neurological disorder ka naam de diya. Functional neurological disorder rather than functional disorders, which was the term used in the past. So I don't know how it will go in times to come, but overall, all of these terms are practically the same. The basic pathology is the same, and the basic pathology is abnormality of the neurological system leading to some emotional and physical symptoms in this, these disorders. Dissociation, conversion, Functional neurological disorders are practically, or somatoform, are practically all correlate. Now, the comorbidity is very high. Unfortunately, most of these symptoms of functional neurological disorder or dissociation or conversion have high comorbidity with other disorders. Anxiety, depression, we'll talk more about it uh, uh, later. So that is important as well. Some symptoms but not severe enough to warrant diagnosis in one third of general population. Now, can you imagine that if we have 100 patients, then if we have 30 conversion diagnosis, then these 30 patients are representing those figures which are very actual figures. So actually people suffer from conversion or functional neurological disorders in a much bigger manner than what is reported in the literature. One third patients usually are not diagnosed or usually don't come for the treatment or usually they don't need a treatment. So if this means that there is some 
self remission in these disorders as well which is a good thing for psychiatrists because in psychiatry the self remission is very common and it helps us to cope with the living life like the current situation of the covid number of things probably will be self remitting but only if the self remission is not achieved then the disorder will be diagnosed 25 to 30% of them which present to us needs admission and hospitalization so the figures of 100 one third are never diagnosed self remitting two thirds which are diagnosed only 33 of them go for long term problems and of them only 30% means one third needs admission so the whole burden of the problem comes to hospitalization comes to a very bare minimum level even then sometimes in my ward i was seeing 80% of the people suffering from conversion disorder so you can imagine how big is the problem range in general population is 11 to 300 per 100000 which comes out to be about 3% 3% of general population which is a big number dsm 5 range says 1 to 500 of 100000 so dsm 5 gives some more uh, figures i don't know how much actually it is in pakistani community but i'm sure that it is much more than what the literature says if we will go for epidemiological studies there are multiple various studies quoted here for epidemiology of the conversion disorders my presentation is uploaded in the group so you can go through that i won't be going into the details because i think i have to cover a few more important areas now women suffers more than men range of 2 is to 1 and 10 is to 1 in adults increased female predominance in children symptoms in women more common on left side of the body now this is tricky so most of the females who are coming to us they will be having the paralysis or the affected component on the left side of the body so the left arm the left limb or the left eye or the left face or the left side of the headache or the left side of the pain in abdomen and things like that and mostly men on the right side why this difference is there maybe i'll be able to respond to it later on in very soon in this presentation women with conversion symptoms more likely to sub be subsequently develop somatization disorder which we have talked earlier association in men between conversion disorder and anti social personality disorder is quite a big so men who have conversion disorders although it's relatively less common commonly seen in pakistan i'm not talking about the international but i'm just talking about my clinical experience no studies quoting so men are correlated with anti social personality disorders men with conversion disorders often involved in occupation or military accidents like bomb blast like terrorism like trauma uh फौज में ज्यादा है और ये फौजी सकाइट्रिस ज्यादा बेहतर इसकी प्रेवलेंस बता सकते हैं बट अनफॉर्चुनेटली एज देर आर नो एज सच हार्ड कोर एपिडेमियोलॉजिकल स्टडीज कैरिड आउट फॉर दिस डिसऑर्डर सो आई डोंट नो आई कैन नॉट कमेंट ऑन इट बट दिस इज व्हाट द लिटरेचर सेज ऑनसेट एट एनी एज बट मोस्ट कॉमन इन लेट चाइल्डहुड लेट चाइल्डहुड बिटवीन द एजेस ऑफ 10 एंड 16 और 18 राइट an early adulthood means 18 to 25 so or after 35 but reported as late as ninth decade of life so this disorder is not age specific sometimes a woman of 55 comes to you with the conversion symptoms and you are surprised why why at this age now you have to remember it's common in younger age but it is not uncommon in older age as well so it is seen in older age as well so men can of 60 years can be presenting with conversion symptoms it can happen any time in life more common in early ages probability of occult neurological or other 
मेडिकल कंडीशन हाई विद ऑनसेट ऑफ सिम्टम्स इन मिडल और ओल्ड एज सो जब मेरे पास पेशेंट अगर 50 साल की उम्र में आ रहा है और उसको फर्स्ट टाइम ये कन्वर्जन के सिम्टम्स हो रहे हैं then first thing comes to my mind is neurological problem and i will definitely rule it out without consideration despite the fact that i am able to assess clearly the stress related factor and the onset of symptoms and the conversion phenomena but i will definitely try to rule out because the percentage of having occult occult means hidden neurological disease is unfortunately there and you should not take the chances of ruling it out and the mic group kar de unhone abhi join kiya shor aa raha common prototypes rural populations ab hamare yahan i don't know things have changed uh, when people say rural population rural still means uh, related to the farming related to the settings which are not very urban urbanized but the other day last time jab main pakistan aaya aur main travel kar raha tha lahore se multan by road i was surprised to see pehle lahore se multan jab aap travel karte the to beech mein milo aisa fasla aata tha jab sirf khet nazar aate the abadi nazar nahi aati aur ab lahore se multan safar ke dauran gt road ki baat kar raha hu not the motorway i was not able to see even a single patch without population without urbanization without developments having cell phone coverage or anything so there is a shift in the urbanization lots of people are now urban kindly mute your mic please thank you so developing nations like pakistan india bangladesh nepal sri lanka they are all developing nations right persons with limited education and medical knowledge now this google has made people very much uh, aware of the medical condition so people can say type on it and then even google, google is available in urdu now so they can type the disease and they can get the results and they come and ask you questions about it so this unfortunately takes problem uh, i hope i am in the right track and not missing anything so benazir agar koi aisi baat ho mujhe message kar dena ya whatsapp call kar dena okay okay coming back so persons with limited education and medical knowledge or decreased iq now this is again so tricky i have mentioned it to you in my previous presentations as well that iq assessment unfortunately is not done as appropriately as it should be done in pakistan than in west in west the iq assessment is done with so many more reliable scales and people are expert in it they spend time with patients and they assess the iq in pakistan we are still relying on some very primitive kind of scales which are used for iq assessment which is unfortunate but if i feel on my assessment that this person is having some deficit somewhere in the cognitive functioning i will definitely say that there is some iq impairment or lower iq thing so we have to assess that lower socio economic background now that bar has gone changed as well previously a lower socio economic background was dependent on the salary packages now the salary pack packages are variable now even the grade 1 person in pakistan earns about 25 to 30000 per year, per month if you compare it with the person who is doing a job in a private sector and earning about 8 to 10000 i don't know which will i be able to rely more on socio economic group so that varies with time so you it's your clinical judgment how you want to rate or you have to follow the world health organization or world bank data for the socio economic grouping military personnel exposed to combat now in civil society in civil practice as a psychiatrist we don't see military people much some may be retired people but majority of the military people are seen by the military psychiatrist or psychologist so they are the best people to tell us about it but i don't know the frequency 
increased frequency relatives of probands with conversion disorder monozygotic but not dizygotic twin pairs now this is actually tricky relatives of probands अक्सर ये बात कही जाती है कि जी क्योंकि इसकी माँ तो भी इसी किस्म की अलामतें होती थी इसलिए इसको भी होती है नाउ देर इज डेफिनेटली बायोलॉजिकल स्टडीज टू प्रूव दैट इट कैन गो इन दी अदर रेलेटिव प्रोबैंड बट एंड इट इज प्रूव ऑन द मोनोजाइकोटिक ट्विंस एज वेल सो बी श्योर दैट यू शुड कोट दिस वन नॉट ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द रीजन वाई देर इज जस्ट मॉडलिंग बिकॉज बहन को होता था तो इसको भी होता है तो ये उसको देख के ऐसे करती है आई डोंट थिंक सो दैट इज जस्टिफाई एवरी इंडिविजुअल हैज ओन स्ट्रेसर एवरी स्ट्रेसर हैज ओन इम्पैक्ट ऑन द इंडिविजुअल्स डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द पर्सनैलिटी एंड अदर फैक्टर्स सो डोंट से ये उसको देख के मॉडलिंग कर रही है यहां पे साइंटिफिक एविडेंस अवेलेबल है कि इसमें जेनेटिक प्रीडिस्पोजिशन है so it is more reliable than just the modeling because we won't be able to prove it but this we can prove conversion disorders epidemiology continued cultural norms are important consideration the form of conversion may reflect cultural ideas about acceptable ways to express distress for example falling or an alteration of consciousness behaviors resembling conversion or dissociative symptoms are aspects of certain culturally sanctioned religious and healing ceremonies so hamare yahan agar aap mein se logon ne dekha ho ke jinn kaise nikalte hain ya uh, taweezon ka ilaj kaise hota hai ya hakeem baba sahab kaise uh, heal karne ki koshish karte hain so you would be able to understand it and i will recommend all of you all the residents and other people to at least visit these people once in your lifetime because you should know how they are treating and what they are treating and the methodologies what people are accepting so jin nikalna kaise wo acceptable hai hamari society mein ke jin nikalne ka ilaj ye hai and you people should be able to understand that as well it's important for us to manage our clients not contradicting their belief system so this is an again an important area in the examination that you do you have to convey the information to the family without challenging their belief system because if you start challenging their belief system then you'll be in trouble and as a professional i cannot say to the people that bhai jaan ye galat hai no i cannot do that i have to keep that thing in consideration what actually their belief system is if i really want to treat them so common psychiatric conditions comorbid with the conversion disorders depressive disorders we conducted a study it was published in 2009 uh, it is available on the internet uh, and we saw that there is prevalence of anxiety and depressive disorders is very high uh, one of my uh, training but he's my colleague as well Uh, he is the head of psychiatry in one of the big institution in Pakistan in Multan. So he's a big man, and now, and he was a big man at that time as well. He was part of, uh, uh, partly with me when we published this study, and he was of great help, Dr. Naimullah Lagari. And I'm sure if sometime he will listen to it, he will enjoy this. We had a very good time when we were trying to study conversion disorders, birth orders, and anxiety disorders. and we enjoyed discussing this a lot in back in 2009 so it's been a long time ago somatization disorders can, are common conversion disorders even is seen in schizophrenia now there are times when resident feel that if we have diagnosed a person with schizophrenia he is free from everything no he can have even conversion disorders reported but considered considerably uncommon but it is seen at least half of the admission in psychiatric unit for conversion disorders have significant mood or schizophrenia mood 
or schizophrenia. I'm not talking about only mood disorder or only schizophrenia. So lots of comorbidity and personality disorders, of course, of course, histrionic up to 21 percent, passive aggressive dependent 40 percent, antisocial, as I mentioned to you earlier. Medical and especially neurological disorders occur frequently with elaboration of symptoms stemming from original organic lesion. So a person was actually having migraine and then started having conversion disorder and started having headaches related to conversion disorders unrelated to migraine. And then it is very difficult for a person diagnosing what comes first and what to be treated first. That's a tricky situation. But as a psychiatrist, I always say to my residents that you have to be a good investigator. Just say, Khufia agent information hassle karte. You have to be like that if you really want to make sure that your patients get well. So conversion disorders, etiology, psychoanalytical factors, Freud, you all people know. I don't have to go into that details, but I will touch it learning theories and biological factors. This is what I believe is most important because I am a biological psychiatrist, so I believe more into this, but it can be explained on the other theories and other treatment strategies as well. Iqbal ne bola, jafa jo ishq mein hoti hai, wo jafa hi nahi. Sitam na ho to mohabbat mein kuch maza hi nahi. So unless or until you will have that pain you won't enjoy even love so you enjoy love and you miss love only when you suffer from pain not otherwise i'm sorry for that but there are a few parameters which are just mine so people don't agree with it because i believe as a professional psychiatrist i believe in few things which i try to explain in other areas as well and when sometimes i say something like this people do feel that I'm offending. I'm not offending anyone, it's just my idea. So psychoanalytical factors, repression, anxiety into a physical symptoms, symptoms allow partial although disguised expression for of the forbidden wish or urge. Conversion disorder symptom has symbolic relation to the unconscious conflict. Symptoms communicate need for special consideration and individual may derive secondary gain with symptoms. So, abhi bhi hum us primary gain or secondary gain ko explain karte hain or treat bhi karte hain. But again, this is one viewpoint. The other viewpoint, learning theory, conversion disorder considered as a piece of classical condition, learned behavior. So, hum uske basis we treat kar sakte hain. Symptoms of illness learned in childhood are called forth as a means of coping with an otherwise impossible situation. So this COVID and our children are coping with it. We don't know how they will behave in 10 years from now when they are restricted at home and they're not allowed to go out and play even. So that's tricky. Let's see, it won't impact. The biological factor, this is I want to explain more. One, brain imaging. Hypometabolism of dominant hemisphere is seen in conversion disorder. Hypermetabolism of non-dominant hemisphere is seen in conversion. And this is the reason why women suffer more symptoms on the left side and men suffer more symptoms on the right side. Describing on this basis, impaired hemispheric communication. So the right brain and the left brain connection, corpus callosum and other commercial fibers, probably there is some miscommunication there, which leads to conversion symptoms, dissonance of thoughts and feelings and emotions and expressing it as a conversion disorder. Con corticofugal feedback, excessive cortical arousal setting of negative feedback loops between the cortex and the reticular formation with inhibition, which leads to conversion symptoms. I know that this is a little bit too much at the postgraduate levels at your point, but this is a too amazing phenomena. If you start reading about the excessive cortical arousal 
setting off negative feedback loops between cortex and reticular formation. It's an amazing network. And if you'll be able to read it, if you have time, you will enjoy it. Neuropsychological testing, subtle cerebral impairments in verbal communication, memory, vigilance, affective incongruity, and attention, all are important biologically if they are assessed in neuropsychological battery. This is also an irony situation that neuropsychological batteries are हम लोग अभी भी प्रिमिटिव टाइम की इस्तेमाल करते हैं अपने क्लिनिकल सेटिंग्स में और उसकी मुझे आज तक वजह समझ नहीं आई आई बॉट लूरिया नेब्रास्का द लेटेस्ट वर्जन ऑफ लूरिया नेब्रास्का टेस्ट व्हिच इज अ न्यूरोसाइकोलॉजिकल बैटरी फॉर माय डिपार्टमेंट एंड आई बिलीव इट वाज यूज्ड हार्डली 3 टाइम्स इन 5 इयर्स बिकॉज ऑफ मल्टीपल रीजंस आई डोंट नो आई डोंट वांट टू टॉक अबाउट इट बट दिस इज अनफॉर्चूनेट so we have to we have to make sure that we should try to bring the new neuropsychological assessment battery into that country and then utilize it not put it in the cupboard and then lost increase incidence with head trauma and organicity please mute your mic thank you okay now conversion disorder diagnosis dsm5 limits to those symptoms that affect a voluntary motor or sensory function functional neurological symptoms so dsm5 ne uh, dissociative disorders mein there is fugue amnesia and identity disorders and here in conversion there are motor sensory or seizure disorders but and i in icd10 as well but they have limited it but there are more symptoms more symptoms than what i'm just talking about one or more symptoms or deficit affecting voluntary motor or sensory function that suggest a neurological or other general medical condition but cannot be explained on that basis psychological factors are judged to be associated with symptom or deficit because the initiation or exacerbation of the symptom or deficit is preceded by conflict or other stressors the symptom or deficit is not intentionally produced or feigned makar mein hai the symptom or deficit cannot after appropriate investigation be fully explained by general medical condition unfortunately this is too tricky especially in lies on psychiatric uh, places where the gastroenterologist keeps on treating the ulcerative uh, the acid peptic disease for years and years and people keep on taking the medication for that and they don't mind it but as a psychiatrist prescribes a medication even for 3 months oh they create a chaos ye dawai na khana ae lag jayegi this is unfortunate this is very unfortunate so specific type of symptoms of deficit with motor symptom deficit with sensory symptom deficit with seizure or convulsions with mixed presentation this can be again seen any time during the course and comorbidity is common most common symptoms are paralysis blindness and mutism mutism khamosh ho gaye waise chup ka rasta is the best rasta when you don't feel now what are what could be these symptoms so these this is another uh, thing i'm sorry i'm stopping it here but i will definitely would like to take your feedback uh, whether you want me to continue and finish it up or you want uh, me to stop it here and continue with it later on anybody kyun be nazir sir continue kar le inshallah sure about it tang to nahi padi hai tang to nahi jayenge नहीं नहीं स्टूडेंट्स हैं ओके नहीं ना आई डोंट माइंड दैट आई डोंट माइंड दैट आई हैव टाइम सो आई कैन कंटिन्यू ओके सेंसरी सिम्टम्स एनेस्थीजिया पैरेस्थीजिया आर कॉमन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ न्यूरोलॉजिकल डेफिसिट इनकंसिस्टेंसीज आर कॉमन हेमी एनेस्थीजिया मिडलाइन एनेस्थीजिया डेफनेस ब्लाइंडनेस टनल वेजन a unilateral or bilateral intact sensory pathways by neurological examination 
and having symptoms. Even uh, when I was trying to teach you, uh, I don't know, which students who said, which uh, just phenomenology or psychopathology in psychiatry. I was talking about astasia abasia. Astasia abasia is the term used when people feel that they fall here and they fall there and they are not able to keep their balances. So that is important. Unilateral violence, conversion disorder, blindness, ability to walk around without collision or self-injury with pupils reactive to light and normal cortical evoked potential. This is again unfortunate that evoked potentials are very basic and simple test, but available at very few uh, areas in uh, neurology in Pakistan. Motor symptoms, abnormal movements, gait disturbances, weakness and paralysis, uh, worsen with calling of attention, uh, rhythmic tremors, chorea, tics, jerks, astasia, abasia, paralysis, paresis of one or two or all four limbs. Uh, reflexes remain normal, no fasciculation, no muscle atrophy, and normal electromyography as well. Seizure symptoms, pseudo seizures, differentiation from true seizures, difficult by clinical observation. One third of those with pseudo seizures have co existing epileptic disorder. So, clear cut clinically, you can see that this is pseudo seizure, but when you go for an EEG, it will turn out to be positive. And then you will be confused whether to treat true epilepsy seizure or whether to treat the pseudo seizures. You know that this is conversion, but there is a change in the EEG. You know that this is true seizures and there is no change in EEG. It's sometimes the call of judgment. It's call of the clinical acumen, how to treat and what to treat and when to treat. Tongue biting, urinary incontinence, injuries after falling can occur. Usually they are not seen, but there is a possibility that some of the patients will come up with this idea and they will say that. Pupillary and gag reflexes are usually retained. No past seizures increase in prolactin concentration. You go for the blood test and the prolactin levels are normal. And you say that this was pseudo seizures and it's confusing. So you have to be careful about these things as well. Associated psychological symptoms, the primary gain, the secondary gain, the La Belle in de France and identification. Now, La Belle in de France, primary gain and secondary gain and identification, I won't talk more about it because the psychologist can explain to you better, but maybe I will touch these in the next slides. La Belle in de France is important. Back when I was getting the training and my mentor was treat, uh, 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 again giving us the clues about it, this was very common. This was very common. The effect was not so much distressing as the presentation was. That is La Belle in de France. There are more details to it, but maybe I will come back to it later on. And Ahmed Faraz ka ek shayr hai, choti choti break le leta hon, taki aap log thoda dada tang na padhe. Mera us shahre adawat mein basera hai jahan. Log sajdoon mein bhi logon ka bura sochte hain. Unfortunate. This is quite true in psychiatry. Associated psychological symptoms, primary gain. Primary gain are the internal conflicts remain outside awareness. Secondary gain, tangible advantages and benefits as a result of being sick. So I don't have to get up, I don't have to take bath, I don't have to prepare meals, I don't have to wash the dishes, I don't have to go to the job. All of these could be the secondary gains, one way or the other. Inappropriate cavalier attitude towards serious symptoms. Ek shaks anda ho gaya, aur wo usko andhe hone ka distress hi nahi hai. That is la balle in de France. Ek shaks ke apahej ho gaya hai, taang pe falaj pad gaya hai, lekin usko wo uski intensity ke hitsaab se distress nahi hai. That is la balle in de France. And it is very significant. So when you are talking to the patient, you amount and gauge clinically the distress with the disorder they are presenting and you feel that there is some disparity. Identification, unconscious modeling of symptoms after someone considered important to the patient. 
with pathological grief reaction, bereaved persons commonly have symptoms of the disease. Jo mar gaya tha, usi ki copy karna ho, shuru ho gaya. No specific in standard laboratory test for the conversion disorders. Unfortunately, it is still there. Absence of the test supports the diagnosis. Experimental psychopathophysiology, unique sympathetic nervous system response as measured by skin conductance upon exogenic stimulus. More rapid cortical evoked potential spikes in contralateral sensory cortex upon physical stimuli. This is an important test. And if by any chance you would be able to see the evoked potentials doing in a laboratory setting, it's amazing. It's very nice how you correlate it with the psychiatric morbidity. So conversion disorders, differential diagnosis. The most important condition in the differential diagnosis is neurological or other general medical condition or substance abuse. I always say that in the exam, we will rule out three things after that psychiatric diagnosis. General medical condition, substance abuse and neurological disorders. And only then make a diagnosis of conversion disorder despite the fact that you know that apparently this is conversion. You were able to see the correlation of the stresses, the primary and secondary gains, but even then, please rule out these three. Neurological conditions, general medical conditions, and substance abuse. And only then label them. Otherwise, don't do that. 25 to 50% of the cases classified as conversion disorders eventually receive diagnosis of neurological or non-psychiatric medical disorders. So this is a very high number. This means that every second person is having some neurological problem, which may you may be able to treat it by yourself. You may not need the desired neurologist to uh, treat it, but still the morbidity is high. So we have to be careful. Differential diagnosis continues. So there are other neurological disorders. I won't be going into the details of it, but you have this presentation. So go ahead with it. Dementia, brain tumors, myasthenia gravis, multiple sclerosis, polymyositis, optical neuritis, partial vocal cord paralysis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, Creutzfeldt jacob disease, AIDS, idiopathic sarcoma-induced osteomalacia, and acquired hereditary drug-induced dystonias. This is the list of the differential neurological medical disorders that you have to rule out. And I can assure you, it's not very difficult. All you have to do is do a neurological examination. Our trend is that we have a neurological deficit. We send neurology call to the neurology examination and say that it is or not. हम खुद neurological examination नहीं कर सकते, but believe me, in examination situation, you are supposed to do the neurological examination. And even in clinical settings, you are supposed to do the neurological examination. So you must know, and you should be able to rule all of them out, all of them out. And it's not very difficult. If you won't be able to do that, you are unfortunately not a good psychiatrist. So conversion disorder, differential diagnosis, psychiatric di diagnosis, schizophrenia, depressive disorders, anxiety disorders, and dual diagnosis of dissociative conversion occurring together. Somatization disorders, hypochondriasis, body dysmorphic disorders, pain disorders, and sexual dysfunction. We never ask about the sexual dysfunction. And I can assure you, it's a very high comorbid condition which exists and leads to conversion symptoms. Do ask. Malingering and fictitious disorder. This is critical in the end. Symptoms under cautious voluntary control. History with malingering usually more inconsistent and contradictory than with conversion. 
and fraudulent behavior clearly goal directed with malingering this is unfortunately tricky but it is there distinct physical findings one tunnel vision visual fields ka test kare perimetry jo aap karte hain aur karna chahiye aapko pata chal jayega profound mono ocular blindness swinging flashlight sign binocular visual fields you will be able to differentiate sphere bilateral blindness wiggle your fingers i'm just testing coordination sudden flash of bright light look at your hand touch your index finger ask these questions and you will be able to differentiate aphonia request to cough they will cough and of aphonia ruled out intractable sneezing you just observe and it will it will be clear and you will be able to differentiate coma examiner open eyes ocular cephalic maneuver and you will be able to rule out now how these procedures are done i am not going into that details because that needs another setting syncope head up tilt test and you will be able to rule out anesthesia map the dermatomes you will be able to rule out hemi anesthesia check midline astasia vesia walking and dancing paralysis and paresis hand drop onto the face hoover test and check motor strength and you will be able to rule out initial symptoms resolve within a few days to a month in 90 to 100% 95% remission spontaneously usually within 2 weeks 75% have no further episodes with 20 to 2 25 recurring within a year during the periods of stress but 50% present later with neurological disorders or neuropsychiatric medical condition affecting the nervous system and this is a high number predictors of good prognosis sudden onset good prognosis easily identifiable stressor good prognosis good premorbid adjustment good prognosis no comorbid psychiatric or medical condition good prognosis no 